today we are going to do a static analysis of a cantilever beam that is subjected to 10 newton force so here we have beam we have a beam okay we have a beam and we are applying 10 newton force and we are going to perform a static analysis so here you can see this beam look like this okay so this beam look like this and the thickness of the beam is your 10 mm thickness of the beam is your 10 mm and this width is your 50 mm and length of the beam is your one meter okay and what we are going to do we are going to model this beam in abacus okay and here you can see we have here you can see we have fix the beam at one end to fix it we initially use screw tight it to make that fix conditions and thereafter we apply some heavy iron block so that we attain a proper fixity at the fixed end and here we apply our 10 newton force so this is the things we want to model in abacus and see what is the maximum deflection is coming to model the beam what we will do we will use the metal property is your 30 gpa the young modulus is 30 gpa poisson is 0.3 and you will see and you will see that we can model a beam either as a three dimensional problem that the beam look like in real life okay in real life you can see the beam look like a 3d so you can model a beam as a 3d or you can model a beam as a 1d element or you can model a beam using two dimensional element okay so here in this video we will try to learn how we can model a beam using two dimensional cell element two dimensional cell element okay two dimensional cell element here we learn how to model the beam using two dimensional cell element here if you observe that while modeling you can use you can use four noted s 4 r element four noted element or Eight noted cell element that we used to call S8R element. Okay, so S4R is your linear element and S8R is your quadratic element that is useful. That will be useful while while doing our convergence study. You will see you will see that if we use S4R element in that case you can attain convergence, but you have to use higher number of element. The other way, if you use S8R element, which is your quadratic element, in that case, you can obtain a converged result with lesser amount of element. Okay, so we have learned that we can achieve the convergence by H by we can achieve the convergence by refining the mesh, or we can achieve the convergence by increasing the polynomial. So, what we are going to do, we are going to see how we can play with your number of element and your order of the polynomial to achieve the converse region. Okay, so once we achieve some deflection of the beam using cell element, we'll try to find what the maximum deflection is coming and how we can obtain our convergence study, how we can then we learn how to plot load versus displacement and we also try to match our result with our analytical model. For analytical model, we know our deflection is, is to come as a PLQ by 3EI Okay, our deflection is to come as a PLQ by 3 EI. In that case, our deflection is to come 26.66 mm. For this case, deflection is to come to 26.66 mm. We will see how much deflection is coming for our problem. Okay, and we'll see whether the result we are getting from fine element is acceptable or not. You will observe that the result is coming, whatever the result is coming using cell element, using cell element. Okay, the result is acceptable. Okay, so we'll see how we can model it. Now, one more thing you have to know that abacus do not have any any inbuilt unit systems. Abacus do not have any inbuilt system. So here you should be very careful. You should choose consistent unit. You should choose consistent unit. If you use SI unit, okay. If you use SI unit, okay. In that case, you can use force all the force as a newton. Okay deflection as a meter and mass as a 
kg or mass density as kg per meter cube. So in this way, you can give the input. Okay, all the length you can define in meter. All the force you can define in newton, and density you can define in meter cube. Now, if you use mm, okay, if you use mm to define the geometry, to define the length and other geometry. In that case, in that case, your density should change. Mass density you need to write in proper order. New force you can write in Newton. This uh, geometry you can uh, write in mm. So when you will get the stress, when you will get the stress in that case, in that case, you will get the stress in MPA. You will get the stress in MPA. Okay. Here you get the stress in MPA. Okay, you will get the stress in MPA. So now here, thing is that you should be very consistent with your unit system if you use all the dimension in meter and all the force in Newton, then whatever the stress will come that you have to be correlated as a Pascal. And if you use force for Newton for the force and meter for the geometry, in that case, whatever the stress component will come, that component you have to, that component you have to consider as a mega Pascal MPA, the Newton per millimeter square. Okay. One more thing, one more thing while giving the density, if you want to perform dynamic analysis, in that case, for density, you should write as ton per meter cube. Okay. If you are giving all in Newton mm, then your density will change. Okay. Will change in terms of in the density, the density will change in comparison to our meter unit. Density will change in comparison to our meter unit. Okay. So, most commonly, this unit system are used. So here we'll use this system so we can see how much deflection is coming. Okay. Now here we'll try to model the cantilever beam using cell element. Here you can see we have already developed a model in Abacus using wire element. Now we'll try to model the same beam using cell element. Okay, so here you can do one thing you can go to file and you can create new model or you can right click here and create a model here here now here you can see it is a model to now again we can start from here so first we'll create geometry using part then we'll define property then we'll go for assembly then we can define step Thereafter, we can define meshing, then we'll define loading, and then we'll sub submit the job. Then we'll submit the job. Okay, so in part, we'll create the beam in cell. We'll create the beam using cell elements. So here, we're using 3D deformable cell in planner. Here, I am choosing 5 because our maximum size of the beam is 1 meter. So it is our working window here. It is Maximum size is 5. So we'll click on continue. Now we'll create the beam using cell elements. So here we'll define the first corner 0, 0, and then we'll define the opposite corner. That opposite corner is your 1 meter. Okay, so 1 meter and your and your width is 50 mm, so 50 to the minus 3. So we click it here and we'll make it done. So here you can see we have created the geometry using cell element. Now we will define the property. So here we can create the material. Material one here we'll define elastic property only. That is your E value is E. Value is your 30 GP 30 E9 and position is 0.3. Now click at OK and then here we'll use cell and homogeneous model and here we can define the thickness of the cell as 10 mm 10 to the power minus 3 and we'll click at OK. So before to that you just see we have selected material 1. Okay here we have material 1. So if you created more number of material here if you create material 1, material 2, material 3 like that then while defining this section here you can choose which material you want to define for this particular section. So we have only one material. So by default, it is taking one. 
Okay, now we'll assign this the section. Now here, we'll click it here and make it done. Okay, now you can see the color has changed. That means we have successfully assigned the matrix property in the bin, which we are modeling using cell. Now we'll click it on the, now we'll click on assembly and here we can create instances. So here we can click dependent or independent instance. So if you select dependent instance, then you have to mess it in a part. Okay, if you choose independent, then you can mess it in assembly. Okay, so by default it is coming dependent. I will choose it. Then I will go for messing. I will go for messing here. You can see if I select this one. It is saying that I have chosen dependent mesh, so I have to select part here. So now here we can define the messing by two way. One is that we can define the messing in two steps. First we have to create the node number by seed and then we have to assign the element or you can assign the messing. Okay, so here you can define the seed by two way. One is the global value using global numbering. So here if you select global number as 0.05, you can see this number element has created. Now you can click it OK and you can do the messing here. You can see this number of element we have created. Okay, so here you can see 20 number of element we have created. 20 number of element we have created. We'll see that how many number of element gives converged result. So what we are going to do? We are going to increase the number of element, and we are going to see that how many number of element will give converged result. Okay, so here we have defined now our messing. So in the messing, we first define seed value. So in the seed, basically we have created the node and then we have selected this mesh and then we have assigned the mesh. So in the messing, we have defined in the element. Okay, in the element means that we have defined the connectivity of the nodes. Okay, now Abacus by default is to select linear element. Abacus by default is to select linear element. You want to choose, if you want to change this to our, our element, Abacus is to select the element as a linear element. Default value is the linear element. Okay. If you want to change to higher element, you have to go to the mesh and the top mesh from this mesh to here. You can select element type and now we can change it to quadratic element. So here you can see quadratic elements is higher order element that is a theta. That means eight noded cell element with reduced indication. And linear element here is S for R. That means we have four noded element, four noded cell element with reduced indication. So here we'll first go with S for R element, and we'll see how many number of element give converse result. And then we'll change to higher element. I will see once how the result is varying. Okay. So here we have created the missing. Okay, and we have assigned 20 number of element for the beam. Okay, we have defined 20 number of element in the beam. Now, what we'll do, we'll go for step. In the steps, we'll try to define what type of analysis we want to perform. So here, we want to perform static analysis. So here, we'll go for general static and we'll go, okay, and we see that what are the things we can modify. These are the things that there we can modify. But since we are doing simple analysis and Abacus also taking basically less amount of time, we will select the default value. Since we are doing simple model and with cell element, Abacus will take very less time to solve it. So we are not changing it. Okay, if you observe that it is taking large amount of time, in that case you have to change that parameter so that you can get less amount of deformation at each step. So if we if we if we control the step size that means you are basically controlling the amount of loading or amount of displacement you want to apply in each increment okay if you give less amount of increment okay if you give less amount of increment in the sense if you give if the increment is not large okay then your deformation also will be small in that case you can have a stable result okay so here we are choosing the default value. Here we are choosing 
a default value. Now we will go for loading. Here we can to do two part here in the loading. Here in the loading, we have to assign the load and you have to assign the boundary conditions. Okay. So here first we'll try to assign the load. So here we'll try to apply the concentrated force. And here we can choose these two node. We can choose these two node and we can apply 50-50 load at each node. So here we can apply here we can apply minus five amount load at each steps. Here we can apply minus five amount load. Okay. And here you can see amplitude is here RAM. RAM means linear increase in the loading. Okay, we'll see the load also increasing linearly with time. Okay. So here we are providing the total 10 Newton load and loading pattern is RAM time. Okay, loading pattern is RAM time. Okay. Now here Okay, but here you can see the direction is showing is tangents in nature. So we have to change the direction. So we have to change the direction. So here we have to apply at minus CF3 direction. Okay, so here we have to apply in minus CF3 direction. You have to put it zero here. And here you can see, okay, here you can see the loading is now changed. Loading has now changed the direction. Now it is acting in the Z direction. Okay, now what you will do, you have to apply boundary condition here. Here from mechanical to encaster option is there. We choose encaster options to define the fixed boundary condition. So encaster option means all degree freedom are fixed. You can see U1, U2, U3, all are zero. U1, U2, U3, all are zero. That means all the displacement along U X1, X2, X3 are zero. All the rotation with respect to X axis, Y axis, and Z axis, all are zero. Okay. So here we will choose encaster option. Here now we can see we have defined the bonding condition also. Here we have defined the bonding condition also. Now what we are going to do here we are going to create one more job, okay, and we are going to continue it. And here we can submit. If there is some error, we can check it from here. You can check it from monitor button. Here you can see error warning. You can see from here, okay. But it is not showing any error or warning. So here you can see it is running. Now it is also completed. Now you can click on, you can click on result and you can see that how much displacement is coming, how much displacement is coming in the U3 direction. So here you can see with 20 number of element, we are getting a displacement of 2.66 into the minus 2. Okay, we will note it down and then we will increase the number of element. We will see how much result we are getting with high number of element. So here with the 20 element we are getting we are getting 2.66 it is a power minus 2 that means 26.62 mm displacement we are getting with with 20 number of element. Now what we are going to do we are going to increase the missing okay we increase the Missing means we are going to increase the number of element. So here we can do, we can increase the number of element. So from 0 0.05 to we can choose 0 0.1 here, and you can see how much yes, how much missing you can do here. You can see now missing is very fine, okay, finer than your earlier model. Now again, we will try to see whether load or boundary condition is acting there or not. Yes, it is acting. Now what we are going to do. We are going to submit the job again and we'll see that how much displacement we are getting, how much displacement we are getting. Here you can see we have created 500 elements. We have created 500 elements. So with 500 elements, how much displacement we are getting, we'll see. So now we'll go to again displacement. Again, we'll go to U3. Now here you can see we are getting the displacement of 2.657 e to the power minus 2. Okay, so you're getting very close value. Now one more iteration we'll do. One more iteration we'll do. Again we'll go to the mesh. Again we'll try to increase the size. So now here we can write 0 0.05. Okay. And now you can see how many number element we have created. Now we have created 2000 element. Okay. Now we'll try to run the job one more time and it 
and we'll note it down and we'll note it down and we'll plot our convergence data. Okay, now we'll plot our convergence data. Now job is completed. Again, we'll go to our U3. We'll go to U3. Now again, you can see now data is not changing. So here you can see that with S4R element, with S4R element, with 500 element, okay, with 500 element, we're getting good result. Okay, one more trial we can do. We can we can choose nearly 200 element and we can see whether we're getting good result or not. Okay, so that also we can do. Now what we can do, we can select this one. Here we can select this one. And here we can use 50 element. Here we can use 50. Okay, here we can use 50 element this side. And along this we can along this we can use four element along this we can use four element okay along this we can use four element and you can do the missing here you can see we have created 350 element okay we have created 350 element okay though that element look like very large size so here we can do one more thing here okay here actually that size of the element is not good the shape of the element is not good Okay, here we can use three instead of four. Here we can use two. We can use two here. Okay, now we can see how the element look like here. Okay, so now here you can see we have created hundred element. Here we have created hundred element, and we will see what are the result is coming. What are the reflection is coming? What are the reflection is coming? Okay. So now we have tried with twenty element. 100 element, 500 element, and 2000 element. Okay, so with 100 element, how much displacement we are getting? Uh, much displacement we are getting here. This comes 2.659 into the power minus 2. Okay, now we'll plot it and we'll see how the result is converging. Okay, so here we have two element, 20 element, we have 20 element, then we have 100 element. And then we have 500 element, and then we have 2000 element. Okay, and we have the value of we have the value of 2.66, 2.66. Then we have 2.659, 2.659. Then we have 2.657. Then we have 2.657. Okay, now this is the way you can see our result is changing. This is 2.659. Okay, here you can see 2.66, 2.659, and then 2.657, 2.657. Okay, so now here you can see nearly with 500, nearly with 500, or nearly with 500 element. Okay, we are getting converged result. Okay, nearly with 500 element, we are getting converged result. Okay, so this is the way we have to do conversion study. So that you can you can decide how many number of element you should use and what type of element you should use. Now what what we can do we can choose one more thing where we can increase the order of the polynomial or you can see you can use the higher order element. Okay, now you can do one more run with your hundred element. You can do one more run with hundred element. Here we'll see what is the value is coming. Okay, so we we'll give a run with 100 element and with S8R element, we'll see what is the result is coming. So here we'll see the result. Here we'll see the result. And you see, here you can see we are getting 2.656. Okay, we are getting 2.656 with 100 elements. So here you can see with 100 element 2.656. Okay, that is basically we're getting very close hello with 100 elements. So here you can see with S8R element, with 100 element, we are getting very close value. Okay, same value we can achieving, same value we are achieving with S4R with 500 element or 2000 element. Okay, so here we can see with higher order element, we can higher order element in combination with less number of element, we can have good result. But other way, also true. If you use lower order element, in that case, you have to use more number of element. Okay, so this is the way we have to do 
the convergence study. Now we'll try to learn how to plot. We'll learn how to plot. Now we'll learn how to plot. So to plot that, to plot that load versus displacement, what you have to do, you have to ask Abacus to generate a displacement for a particular node set and also you have to ask the workers to generate the forces or you can say reaction forces for a particular node set okay so here we want to generate displacement for the end node okay so what you have to do you have to create a node set considering the end nodes and you need to create one more node set on the boundary so that we can get the reaction force for the node set okay so here we'll create two node sets to create the node set what we'll do we'll go to the assembly then we'll go to the set we'll go to assemble then we'll go to tool then we'll go to the set then we'll go to the create and here we'll select node now here you can write this is your displacement 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 node set okay this is your displacement node set now here we'll choose this node here we'll choose this node here we'll choose this node and we'll create a node set here we'll choose this node we'll create a node set we'll get the deflection for this and we'll calculate the average displacement okay we'll get the average displacement of this node and this end okay this end basically will will define as a reaction force or a okay we'll define as a reaction force and we'll choose this node and here here what you have done we have created two node set one is corresponding to displacement another is corresponding to reaction force okay now what we're going to do we're going to the steps and in the steps here we'll go for history output and in the history output we'll ask abacus to generate the displacement for the particular node set so here we'll go for set instead of whole model we can choose the domain to set and then we'll select your displacement and here we'll ask displacement your displacement is your u3 because it's your z reaction reaction is your u3 here okay okay reaction is your displacement is your u3 displacement is your u3 okay now one more time we'll go in the history output now here we'll find we'll ask abacus to find the reaction force so here we'll select rf and here we'll try to find the reaction force in the z reaction okay now what we have done we have created two node set and we have asked abacus to generate the displacement for the nodes which is coming in the node sets and also you ask abacus to generate the reaction forces which is coming in the boundary since abacus cannot measure the load directly what abacus is to abacus is to create the reaction forces and from the reaction forces we can learn how much load is acting there okay so what we did we asked abacus to generate the reaction forces which is coming in the z reaction okay and store it in the node set which is there in the reaction force rf node set okay now what we'll do we'll run the job we'll run the job and we'll see how we can plot it Now job is over. We go to the result. Now, if you want to plot it, what you have to do? You have to go to, you have to go to the create XY data, and here you have to select ODB history output. Here you have to because in the step in the history output we have requested to give our displacement and reaction forces. So here we will go to ODB history output, and then we will go to here and what we are going to do we are going to select the, all the reaction forces okay we are going to select all the reaction forces and we'll save it as a sum we'll save it as a sum and we'll write reaction force rf rf3 we're going to write is rf3 okay and we'll save it here you can see this is coming force versus displacement here you can see we apply total 10 Newton force and the action force is coming 10. So we can say that our analysis is correct. 
and here what we are going to do we are going to save this displacement data as a u3 okay as a u3 and we will take the average of this we will try to average of this we will write as u3 and we will save it here you can see we are getting the displacement here with respect to time but here this displacement is coming in negative order okay, we will see how we can deal with this okay but here you can see that we are getting the displacement with respect to our time so one is basically total time in which your total load is acting one is the total time in which your total load is acting okay now to plot it that now to plot now to plot the load versus displacement what you have to do you have to go to here you have to go to operate on xy data and here you have to choose combine option and then you have to give minus sign here and then you have to select u3 and then you select rf3 and you plot it okay so now here you can see this is our load versus displacement this is your force and this is your displacement so this is the way we should plot the load versus displacement curve okay now you want to save it what you can do you can go to the file and you can go to the print option and then from here you can choose gray scale or black and white or color so here we will choose gray scale and i will give the file name as your cell 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 or ss like that and from here you can choose to png or tf format okay so i have selected tf t format okay i have selected t format and i have just click okay here you can see it has created a file in the c drive at temp folder so here you have to go c drive and the temp folder okay and now here you can see ss file it has created now here you can see it has created load versus displacement graph okay that is just force and this is a displacement so this abacus has created load versus displacement graph so now you can copy it and you can paste it to make a report of your result okay so this is the way you have to work in abacus to model a beam using cell element to model a beam using cell element what you have to do you have to go to the part you have to define the geometry and then you have to define property you have to define assembly you have to define steps you have to define loading you have to define mesh and then you have to submit the job so once you submit the job you have to note down your desired result and you have to increase the number of element and you have to see whether your desired result is converging or not so here we have done the conversion study we have done the conversion study with s4 element s4 r element with linear element and thereafter we also change to our s8 r element to see whether the result is changing or not so what we observe that with s8 r element with higher order element if we use less amount of element also then also we can get converged result on the other hand if you use s4 r element if on the other hand if you are using s4 r element then you have to use higher number of element to get our converged result okay so thereafter what we have learned we have learned how to plot our load versus displacement graph okay and we also we have learned how to print the graph and how to save it okay so this is the way basically we should model a beam in abacus and you can plot it and you can save your data okay i hope you get some idea thank you